I'm Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, welcome to, to Physics, Physics with Beth and Beth. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to Physics with Beth and Beth. I'm Beth and today we are continuing our discussion of AP Physics 1 Unit 3, which is on work energy and power with a little worked out example of a quick application of the work energy theorem. So here is our little problem here. We have a crane that is lifting a 425 kilogram steel beam vertically upward, a distance of 95 meters, and we're asked to calculate how much work the crane does on the beam if the beam accelerates upwards at 1.8 meters per second squared. And thankfully we're told that we can ignore friction forces. Okay, so whenever we see this problem, there are actually two different ways we can solve it, and we're gonna work through both ways here. So the first way that we can solve this is by using the way that we uh, learned to calculate work a while ago um, in the first part of this unit, where we know that work is equal to the parallel component of force times our displacement. And the second way that we can use to calculate this is if we remember our new little work energy theorem, that fun little tool we have in our pocket now, where work is equal to the change in energy. So let's work out this first example first, or our first way first. That makes sense. So uh, the first step oftentimes when we have a problem like this is to draw a picture. So I'm just going to do a little free body diagram. I have my steel beam here. I have the force of my crane pulling it upwards. And I also have the force of gravity pulling it downwards. So if I'm trying to solve for the force of my crane, well, I know that the sum of my forces in my y direction is equal to the mass of my steel beam times my acceleration in my y direction. Well, what forces do I have in my y direction? Well, I have the force of my crane pulling upwards and the force of gravity pulling downwards. So I have the force of my, these are all vectors. Shame on me for not including my vector signs the force of my crane pulling upwards minus the force of gravity pulling downwards is equal to the mass of my beam, which is 425 kilograms, times my acceleration in the y direction, which I know is positive 1.8 meters per second squared. So times 1.8 meters per second squared. Okay, well, what Let's solve this for our force of the crane, so I can move FG over here. So the force of my crane is equal to 425 times 1.8 plus my force of gravity. So what is my force of gravity? Well, that is just my mass times my acceleration of gravity. So this is just equal to 425 times 1.8 plus the mass of my crane over here. This is just my mass times my acceleration of gravity. I mean, the mass of my steel beam, which is 425 kilograms, times my acceleration of gravity, which is a 9.81, which if I solve for that, and I can't do that in my head, but thankfully I have it written down, we end up solving that the force of my crane, the force that my crane is applying on my steel beam is equal to 4,000, 934.25 newtons. All right, now we just have to say, well, if I'm trying to calculate the work that my crane does, that's going to be the parallel component of the force of my crane times the displacement. Thankfully, my displacement is directly upwards and the force of my crane we're also assuming is directly upwards. So I don't have to do any trig to isolate this parallel component here, we're already good. And then my displacement, I know, well, my steel beam was vertically, moved vertically upward a distance of 95 meters. So I have that this is equal to the parallel component of my force. So this is just 4,934.25 newtons times my displacement, my delta x, which is also 95 meters. My steel beam is moving in the same direction that my crane is pulling, so these should both have the same sign. They should both be positive. Um, or rather, if they were, we, they should both have the same sign. Yeah, never mind, we're good. Okay, so uh, if I'm calculating this number, I just multiply these two things together, and we end up finding that the work accomplished by our crane is equal to 
469,000 joules. And you might say, hey, that seems like a large number, but hey, 425 kilogram steel beam is pretty large, and it's also being pulled upward a distance of 95 meters, so we should be getting a big number. Our units all check out, and we are good to go. So that is the first way we can approach solving this problem, using our little equation for work here. However, now we have a new tool in our toolbox, so let's practice using it and try and end up with the same answer. Well, we know our work is equal to the change in energy of our system. So in this instance, that's going to be our change in uh, potential energy plus our change in kinetic energy. So let's talk about how both of these energies change. Well, our potential energy, originally, our beam is on the ground. So are you, that's neither a U nor a G. Uh, let's try this again. Our U sub G, or our gravitational potential energy initially, is equal to our mass times the gravitational energy constant times our height of zero. So this is m times g times zero, which is equal to zero. And our final gravitational potential energy is equal to m times g times our final height, which we know is 95 meters. So this is m times g times 95. So our change in potential energy is going to be our final minus our initial. So m times g times 95 minus 0, or just this. So delta u sub g is equal to u g final minus u g initial, which is equal to our mass times our acceleration of gravity times 95 meters. And that is just equal to a really large number. So that's 3960798. Joules, which is our same as what we have here, so 396,000 joules. So that's our change in gravitational potential energy. Now we just have to calculate our change in kinetic energy. Well, our initial kinetic energy, our beam, we can assume is not running anywhere on its own. Our initial kinetic energy of it is zero. So our initial kinetic energy is equal to zero joules, or in other words, one half in times v squared, but our velocity is zero, so this whole thing is equal to zero. Um, but now we have to calculate our final kinetic energy, which gets a little tricky, because we know our kinetic energy is equal to one half m times v squared, but now we have to solve for the velocity of our beam. Well, thankfully, we know how to do this. This is hearkening back to the old days of our unit one kinematics equations. So if we think about, okay, we know our acceleration, we know our initial velocity of zero meters per second, how do we solve for our final velocity? Well, we can just remember this friendly old equation from way back when, where our final velocity is equal to our initial velocity squared f plus two a delta x, or in, this is how it looks on your equation sheet, but in our case, we're dealing with delta y. So this is what we have here. So if we're trying to solve for our final velocity, it's just going to be equal to our initial velocity, which was zero squared, plus two times our acceleration, which is 1.8 meters per second squared, times delta y. Well, we know we were lifted upwards 95 meters. So that is our displacement. So if we just solve for the square root of both sides, then we just get that our final velocity is equal to 18.49 meters per second, which means that we can plug this into our kinetic energy here. So our kinetic energy is equal to 1 half times our mass, which is 425 kilograms, times our final velocity squared. So if we multiply all of these things together, we plug in this velocity into right here, we can solve for the fact that our final kinetic energy is 72,649 joules, which means our change in kinetic energy, which is our final kinetic energy minus our initial kinetic energy, is just going to be this value here. So I'm going to have to erase this so I have room. So we're going to erase my little calculation of velocity here, which 
means that our change in kinetic energy is equal to this, so 72,649 joules. All right, and now we know that our work is equal to our change in energy total, so our change in gravitational potential energy plus our change in kinetic energy. So if we calculate that by just adding these two things together here, our work is equal to 72,649. That's, I tried to write a nine and the letter J at the same time and it did not work out well. Let's try that again. 649 joules plus our change in gravitational potential energy, which is 396,079 joules. And if we sum those up together, we end up getting a number that is about 469 thousand joules. And hey, would you look at that? We have the exact same number for both our work here, which is the uh, change in energy caused by our crane, and also the work done by the crane here. The same values, that's what we should have expected. Two different ways of working out this problem. Thank you so much for sticking with me through all of that. I hope that helped things become a little clearer. Uh, you all are troopers and happy physicsing.